E aí, e aí, galera? How's it been uh, back in Brazil? Great, you know, great to be here. My 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 wife and my kids just got here. A lot of friends coming. I think I sold a lot of tickets. I'm gonna talk to to, to the boss man, see if he can hook me up with something because I sold a lot of tickets, so I'm happy. Are you kind of? I'm sure you're very happy to be fighting on this event, but you're a little bit frustrated that you're fighting someone ranked number 12 instead of one of these bigger names. I was. I was frustrated because after the Hamza fight, I went to the to the office. I had a great meeting with Dana Hunter, and they said they're going to give me a big fight. And uh, we kind of got on the same page. The name was Masvidal. Fight was offered to November, then December. Whenever I was passing, I wasn't getting a fight. And then I saw they schedule a card in Brazil. I said, okay, I'm back in Brazil. You know, I'm going to, you guys want me there? They say, yes. So we got a fight in here. And I was just waiting for the opponent. They tried Masvidal. I don't know what happened. And then they tried Bilal Mohammed too. But that they didn't accept. So I was so happy because I was watching that event and Neil Magni called me out. And then I just call Ali, a text day, and I say, hey, if everyone says no, I'm fighting this guy. You know, like, I don't care. It got to a point that just give me some, someone, you know, and I'm happy that there's Neil Magni. He stepped up. So I'm, I like that. And he's a tricky guy, right? He could be someone that you could easily sort of overlook thinking about those bigger names and then he could cost you. Yeah, no, I'm not overlooking him for sure. And, and, and it's being hard to keep my focus on it because everybody, hey, what's next? I say, there's no next. I gotta, I can say next is Kobe, next is this guy, next. But if I lose to New Magni, then I'm, you know, four steps behind. So I'm focused on this guy. This guy is long, 6'3", foot tall, good range, uh, experience for a lot of guys. I think he... I kind of expecting that he's going to try to throw a lot of knees, try to stay on the outside. If I rush to come me, I think he's going to try to kind of uh, clinch a little bit. Very smart. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm not overlooking this guy. I'm not passing uh, a new magnet for sure. I think he's very tough. I gi I, and I give him all the credit, you know. I think I'm thankful that he stepped up and he's here in Brazil, but I'm ready I'm ready for a war if, if I have to go to. Yeah. I know you said you don't want to th talk about what's next, but I do know that Masvidal said he wanted to fight you in London, right, in March. Is that even a possibility for you to turn around and fight again that quickly, or do you think that fight's kind of just gone for now? I don't know. Yeah, I'll, I'll fight if, if, if everything goes good. I pass by New Magnet and they offer me, you want to turn around, I will. When you, uh, it, it's no question that if they offer me a fight... For sure, I'll take it. But I think it depends because, like you said, I'm fighting the guys behind me. So, and then let's say if I beat if I beat both of these guys, I still think I still gotta pass Kobe. I still gotta pass these guys. So then I gotta do one more fight. We gotta see. We gotta see what makes more sense. But uh, if everything goes my way, I'm trying to look forward. You know. Yeah. Is your division one of the most frustrating, right? Because you get the same names that never seem to move or fight each other, and it's just tricky, right? It never move, and <laughs> I got frustrated with that, too. I'm over already. Like I said, I'm focused on your Magni, but how the heck Bilal Muhammad beats Sean Brady? I have nothing to do with that. He passed me on the ranks. Like, I got it. Okay, he got a couple of wins, but he never beat me. Why he took my place? And... He declined the fight when they offered him to fight. So we fight each other here. We all know why no, because he got my place. But I think he's still number five. He will say yes. So I don't. That's one thing that I don't like. It. He, he's he's out of my control. But that was a little frustrating. Like, man, how the fuck did this guy pass me in the ranks? Like he never beat me, and he don't want to fight me. So why? Yeah. I know that it was a rematch you wanted for ages. Did you hear that Hamzat's moved up to middleweight? Yeah. That's what I heard. I don't know if it's true, but I just, it's funny because any, anything if the guy posts, you know, if he posts taking a shit, everyone going to repost, everyone going to share that. And then he was huge. He's already big. He already, if you guys don't remember, last time he missed the weight and he was already big. Now he's looking bigger. I think that he's going to middleweight next. That's what I think. I kind of heard. 
I don't know if it's true, but I, if you ask me what I think, I think he's a middleweight next fight. Is that still a rematch you want? Would you even consider going up to middleweight just to fight him again? Or would you think, like, once he's up there, he's gone? For sure, I'll fight this guy back. We're not done. Any time that I got a chance, we, we're going to fight again. For sure, he's... He can be on his condition. Okay, we, I cannot make 170 right now. Let's say he say that. Fuck it. Okay, we're middle in the middle. 178, 180, and for sure we'll make that fight back. So all the losses that I have is on the UFC. Two guys are out of the UFC. My two losses are Rashid Magomedov and uh, Pereira, uh, uh, Michel, per um, I forgot the guy's name, Tractor. So he's out of the UFC already. So the other three losses were Dan Hooker. He's a lightweight. I'm the good guy doing his thing. I'm not chasing that. But the other two, yeah, I'm looking forward. There's Kamaru Uzma and, and Hamza Shimaev. We, we, I don't know if we're gonna, if we, uh, if I'll be able to do both back. But, yeah, if I could, yeah, I would do both back. Who do you think wins, Kamaru or Leon? That's a tricky one because I, who I want to win, I want Kamaru to win. Who do I think is going to win? I, I don't know. I've been talking to the coach with the guys. They say, oh, Kamaru, for sure. But I think that I, – I said that before a couple of times. The altitude mess with, with Leo, I think, because he looked great on the first round. And then he kind of slowed down on the second round. I think that was because of the altitude. I might be wrong. And then the way I see is his coach did a wonderful job, the fourth to the last round. I, the way I see is the the train was getting out of the trail, and the fight was he was kind of losing the fight, and they that's an amazing job that I like to see from the coach. Then they put this guy back on trail, and the guy was able to 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 capitalize a beautiful knockout, doing to a lot of struggle. And then he even said, "Oh, I didn't look good. I don't know what happened. I think that happened, the altitude." But now going to London, who? Now, and, and you have the mental, a lot of mental things that happens that people don't realize. Kamar was the last guy walking, dancing, taking his time. Guy was waiting for him. Now it's the opposite. Now he's in London, a hostile territory. Kamar is going to walk first. He's going to be in the octagon waiting for Leon. So I think it's going to be a close fight. But if I got to pick one, I think because of those little things, I think Leon gets the win. I want Kamar, but I think Leon gets the win. Good analysis. Thank you. Thank you. Certainly in the past, it seems some opponents seem to underestimate Neil Magny. You definitely don't sound like one of these people. Where would you rate his overall toughness and, and his takedown defense? I think he's very tough. I think just the mentality that he has to step up, to call out Hamza, to call out, to get a fight against Shavka, to call me out, that, that says about, a lot about the guy. 20 wins on the UFC welterweight division, I think he's very, very tough. Uh, now, technically, takedown defense used to be one of his weakness, but for sure, we all know he, he's getting better. I do believe he's getting better on it. He's putting a lot of work because that's one of my strengths, and I think he's been working on it. It's going to be very hard for me to give you a note, but I think that was – his weakness. I don't think it is anymore. I think, I think he's getting very dangerous, very long. He started using his knees a lot, change stance, uh, use a lot of tips. Great on the clinch. I, I, I'm ready for a war if I have to go there. You know. And he gave you a lot of credit for your striking and where your striking game has came. Is that where you feel that you've had the biggest uh, improvement in your MMA game in years recent? Yeah, the last years yet, but. Uh, the last, this last year after the fight, I, 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 I put a lot of focus on my wrestling, on my transition, you know, not just the striking, but striking to a takedown. And that, that's where my goal, yeah, but yeah, for years I put a lot of emphasis on my, on my striking. But now, not just striking, you know, I think my, my strength is my, my grappling. So, but in order to do my grappling, I gotta get better on my wrestling. I need to, to, to get better on my wrestling, my striking through wrestling. So all those transitions, that, that is a thing that I'm putting a lot of energy right now. So what are your keys to the victory for this fight? What needs to happen to make sure you get your arm raised on Saturday? I need to pull him out. I think you got to knock him out or submit him. Otherwise, you're going to stay there three rounds. You know, I think the key is, I think, I think he got good gas tank, good volume. 
But I think I get the heavy hands and I get the heavy grappling. So if I mix that good, and if I'm present in there, because it's going to be a lot of pressure, I know. And uh, But if I'm 100% present in there, Saturday night, I I'm finishing you, Magni. Every time you fought and won in Rio, in not, not only in Rio, but in Brazil, you won by, by stoppage. Was it either a knockout or submission? Is that the way you, you see yourself winning on Saturday? I hope so. <laughs> That's what I'm looking forward to. I want to get a finish. I think at, at, at that stage in my career, just a win, just a decision, a tough fight doesn't get me anywhere. But if I do have a great finish, either a knockout or a submission, I think it, it, it says a lot more for who I am, you know? The Magni fought in, in Rio three times, and two of those he lost was, were to Damian Maia and Sergio Moraes, who are also big jiu-jitsu guys. Uh, how do you compare your jiu-jitsu to theirs? Uh, what, what, what do they do better than you? What do you do better than them? I think we all three are the highest level jiu-jitsu, you know? Sergio Moraes is a world champion with the gi two or three times. Damian Maia was world champion with the Gi, several belts, not on the black belt, but then he was ADCC champion. I was Jiu-Jitsu world champion on the black belt, third place in ADCC. We're there, we're on the highest level. And I think uh, for sure we, Damian has a lot of experience. I think he was one of the best guys that, that was a pure Jiu-Jitsu in the UFC. Uh, Sergio got a couple, I think he got a couple of knockouts. He got, he got a little bit better on the striking. Uh, yeah, I think we all high level in jiu-jitsu. Silver, uh, I, I want to know, uh, you, you were talking about the, the fight between Leon Edwards and, and Kamar Usman. What was your first thought when you saw the, the knockout at, at that last minute in, the, in that fight? I was there live. Mm. I was there and uh, it was crazy because I had a red-eye flight back to Florida from Salt Lake. And uh, Ozzy, the, the, the UFC guy, he came and said, hey, we, you, you're late for your flight. Whenever the fight is over, you got to go. And then I'm like, okay, come out, you want me to go now? I said, no, wait, when the fight is over, you got to run. And that was just like two minutes away. And then I kept looking. And I kept looking. And then I don't know. I kind of fell a little bit because... Kamar should take him down and he kind of was walking, taking his time and kind of, I was listening to, to, to Leo Edwards' coach. He was giving a couple of good advice. Kamar was slowing down and poof. Do you think he, he was overconfident? I don't think so. I think one minute to go, he was winning. I think he just wanted, I don't know, I think the fight was on, just, just kind of stay there for one more minute. I don't think he was overconfident. But yeah, he got caught. And and let's say that that he he cannot fight on on London against Leon Edwards. Who should fight for the title? Me. I will go. And if you can't say the Gilbert Burns, who should? No one. <laughs> okay. Wait, wait okay. for me. And my my, my last one. Uh, you are one of the the three athletes that uh, are are back again in Brazil. You were here in 2020 on the last event, and you are back now. What did you miss the most of fighting in Brazil? I miss my parents and my fights, you huh. know, like since the jiu-jitsu, they always there for me. They always support 100%. And the visa was declined twice. I'm going after that, that console. But, uh, but now they're here, you know, they, they're going to be at the fights. It's going to be, yeah, I think that for sure. I miss the crowd of my friends, a lot of friends from jiu-jitsu, friends from, from high school, from my neighborhood. Like I said, I, I helped to sold a lot of tickets, so I think the crowd's gonna be insane. I miss the the the, the crowd insane, but number one was my, my parents in there. That's what I miss the most. Thank you very much. Hola, Gilbert. How you doing? Good, good. Looking great, by the way. Thank I you. love the drip. I love the clothing. I love the hair. You're oozing confidence, man, and yes. that comes straight after one of the biggest fights of the year. I wanted to know about your personal energy coming into this year yeah always the best energy i have a great energy and uh confident you know last year was only one fight okay it was a great fight but i still lost that fight uh but this year i'm, I'm hoping to having a busy year three maybe four fights i don't care i want to earn that title shot 
I, I, it depends on who I'm fighting, but maybe two or three fights I can earn that. But yeah, I'm, I'm full of energy and I want to be busy 2023 with a lot of energy. Absolutely. I love the energy, by the way, like I said before. Um, there's this guy named Claudio Puelles, right? He's my guy. Yeah, my guy too. And he was asking me, well, you got to ask Gilbert, if he wins on, on Saturday, is he finally going to call out Tate? Yes. No, I'm going to beat up Tate maybe Friday when I see him because he's a nice guy, but everyone that works here, they know he has a big mouth. He don't stop. Like, sometimes he got to get his Mac. That's why. But uh, Tate's, Tate's a nice guy. Best, not best because like, a lot of great guys do the hands here, but he's my favorite one, favorite one to, ha to wrap my hands. He's my neighbor. He lives very close to my house. But, yeah, sometimes he's annoying. He got to get his Mac. That, that's all. <laughs> well, you're excited about your fight, of course, but who else on the card are you excited to see compete? couple fights. Number one guy that I'm super excited was is Gregory Rodriguez. I think that guy is the future on the middleweight division. Like I said, I had I, I, I had a couple of losses. I had a couple of wars, but I never had a headache for one or two days. This guy gave me headache, a headache. On, on the beginning of my camp, we sparred very hard. And I was just like, man, I'm having a freaking headache. Freaking Gregory. And then I don't, I, I shit, I'm not going to spar with you no more with the big gloves, just small gloves. Because then he chose. But I think he's, he's the future in the middleweight division. I think he's going to do great. I do believe, not just because of my teammate, I think... The lifestyle that he has, family guy, Christian, relaxed, trains super hard. My, his mind is on the right place. I think Gregory is going to be a monster on that division. Another guy, Malia Jinho too, Almeida, Joelito Almeida. I think the guy is the future. I think uh, a high potential to become a champion. Uh, who else? Uh, Figueredo and Moreno. But by the way, we're done, right? Quadrilogy, not anymore. That's the only one. We don't need that anymore. And Glover, for sure. I love Jamal Hill. Like I said, I love Moreno and Jamal Hill. Both great guys, but Brazil. So, for sure, I'm looking forward to Glover fight. Uh, Figueredo, Gregory, Malaginho, Almeida. That's the fight that I'm looking forward to. Thank you for your time, Gilbert. Best of luck. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Globe. Perdão. Vou começar a sessão em português aqui. Eu, Gui Durinho. Gui Durinho. É... Lá na Bahia, há muitos anos atrás, eu tive o prazer de arbitrar seu árbitro central da sua primeira luta de MMA. É... A minha pergunta é o seguinte. Aquele jovem Gui Durinho imaginaria onde a estrela que você virou hoje do maior evento do mundo? Era um sonho, né, aquela época, mas falta muita coisa acontecer ainda, tipo, não... Acho que nem no meu melhor sonho eu, eu imaginaria estar tá vivendo o que eu estou vivendo hoje em dia. Sou muito grato, mas tem muita coisa para conquistar ainda, eu quero ser campeão. Aquele mesmo moleque lá, até antes disso, eu, eu tenho aquela mesma vontade de ser campeão, de aprender, de melhorar, e... Mas ainda falta muito, sou grato... No... Estou amarradão, estou muito feliz de onde eu estou, mas falta conquistar muita coisa ainda. Perdão se você já respondeu essa pergunta é, em inglês, mas qual o próximo passo? Vencendo, vencendo o New Magn, qual o próximo passo? Quem você mira? Você está ali na cabeça sempre, né? você sempre está nos tops ali. Então, assim, você deu um passo para trás, até para não ficar parado, porque está todo mundo ali casado. É... Você, você, você não nega a luta, como nunca negou. Mas, assim, qual é o próximo passo? Você já tem plano já para a próxima luta? Cara, na verdade, eu não tenho planos. É, não dá para eu, pra eu já achar que já ganhei. Qual é o próximo? O próximo é o Neil Magny. Então, eu tenho que entrar lá sábado. Eu nem sei o que eu vou fazer no domingo. Não, não tenho nem planos para domingo, segunda. Não sei o que eu vou fazer. Eu sei que eu vou fazer sábado. Sábado eu quero ganhar a qualquer custo, se precisar que seja uma guerra, vai ser uma guerra, mas eu não sei quem... Lógico que eu tenho, eu tenho um, um caminho, que eu, que, eu, que eu imagino quem que eu vou falar ali, 
mas não tenho nada certo, eu quero ganhar do New Magni. Depois que eu ganhar, a gente vê ali as opções, eu devo falar alguma coisa, devo falar o nome de alguém, mas aí sento com o meu manager, a gente traça uma meta ali, mas não tem... Não dá para fazer um plano depois do New Magna, porque não passou ainda, não aconteceu. Toda vez que eu fiz isso, eu dancei no meio do caminho. Dá para eu falar, quero isso, quero esse cara, esse cara, e perco para ele. Então, o plano é ganhar dele mesmo. Chegar sábado, arrebentar ele, aí dá aquele alívio, e aqui, ah, tá, esse é o próximo, daí a gente foca nele. Perfeito. Como você falou, você quer, quer alcançar muito e quer mais uma corrida para o cinturão. É, hoje você se, a, é, se encontra na sua melhor... Melhor guibestidurinho de todos os tempos. Você, você acha que você hoje, tecnicamente, fisicamente, é a melhor versão sua? Acho que sim. E, mas acho que ainda dá para melhorar. Acho que essa luta vai ser mais, vai ser mais um teste, vai ser mais um, uma evolução que vai me trazer para um nível maior ainda. Eu acho que a cada luta eu venho evoluindo, eu venho melhorando. Coração, a galera sabe que eu tenho. Então agora é melhorar a técnica, melhorar a inteligência de luta. Venho focando muito nisso. E o principal é, é o mental, é estar presente lá na hora. Que aqui eu estou presente, estou falando para vocês, estou amarradão de estar aqui, mas eu tenho que estar nessa presença na hora da luta. Tipo, sem, sem, sem distração, focado. Se eu entrar lá focado, 100%, sem distração, eu vou acabar com essa luta. Você é um cara que não tem papa nas línguas, você fala mesmo o que pensa assim. A mudança de, de cinturão, agora com o Leon Edwards, você acha que é um adversário mais viável para você? É uma disputa mais viável para você? O um jogo de casa, em relação a casamento de jogo, o Leon Edwards? Cara, eu acho que ele é duro para caramba também. Eu acho que é outro... Eu sou, eu sou mais baixinho na categoria ali. É outro alto técnico para caramba em pé. Tem um bom jiu-jitsu, tem uma boa defesa de queda, tem gás. Eu acho até que o nível técnico da trocação dele é mais alto. Ele, ele é um cara que tem uma trocação muito boa ali. Mas, cara, não, putz, não muda quem tiver com o cinturão. Tem que fazer meu papel agora. Tem que matar o Neil Magni. Se tiver que fazer mais uma ou duas, fazer mais uma ou duas, matar esses caras para conquistar uma disputa de cinturão. Não quero ter que ligar para o Dana e pedir, por favor, me dá uma disputa ou ficar implorando. Não, não tem essa. Eu quero conquistar essa parada. Então, se eu tiver que fazer duas, três, eu vou fazer. E quem tiver com o cinturão na hora, se for o Camaro, se for o Leon, é esse cara que eu vou lutar. E, tipo, não, putz, não tem nem escolha, meu irmão. Quem tiver com o cinturão é que eu quero lutar e, e quem dizer que sim, eu vou lutar. Então, é, é simples para mim. É ganhar a próxima luta e ganhar a próxima e ganhar a próxima, uma hora o cinturão vai vir. Então, eu tenho que... É simples, não é fácil. É continuar ganhando e, e focado ali, que eu acho que eu, eu, é o objetivo. Eu quero trazer esse cinturão. Perfeito. Para encerrar, é, falando da... da luta de sábado, é, você é um especialista no solo, apesar de virar um striker de excelência também, melhorou bastante. É, porém, o New Magnum já mostrou que é deficiência quando pega um especialista de solo. Já foi finalizado por algumas vezes, inclusive pelo Rafael. É, e você é um cara é, campeão mundial. É, esse é o jogo, você vai aceitar a trocação, é um cara grande para a categoria, como você mesmo disse, apesar que você já está enfrentando, trocando com caras maiores que vocês, mas você acha que esse é o caminho, é levar essa luta para a sua área? Eu acho que esse é o caminho, eu acho que vai, vai ter um pouco de trocação ali antes. E, 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 cara, se eu ficar muito confortável, se eu ver que está muito tranquilo na trocação... Eu posso até ficar lá um pouquinho, mas se eu ver que, meu irmão, o que eu acho, que eu vou ver ele levantando o joelho, se mexendo pra caramba ali, tá longe, tá difícil de achar, tá catimbento, vai ter jiu-jitsu pra caramba. Então depende muito do, do grau de dificuldade. Se eu ver que dá pra acertar uma mão, eu vou esperar ali pra tentar acertar uma mão pesada nele ali, limpa, que acho que isso eu também tenho chance de terminar com a luta, achando a mão limpa ali. Mas se eu ver que tá difícil, tá chato que eu espero ele chato assim, não deixando eu achar a distância, chutando, levantando o joelho, movimentando muito, deixa eu ver que tá chato, meu irmão, vai ser jiu-jitsu, não, não tem nem, não vou nem pensar muito. Perfeito, obrigado. Durinho, Valeu. Aqui só para, é, você falou sobre a questão do foco, né, de não perder o foco. E no início você citou a questão dos ingressos, que vai ter um público ali para torcer para você. Como realmente deixar essa questão emocional ali dos é, amigos, familiares que estarão torcendo para você de lado quando a, a, a grade ali do octógono se fechar. 
Então, é... primeiro eu tô fazendo um trabalho psicológico muito forte. A psicóloga vai estar tá aí, primeiro evento que ela vai vir, Luciana Castelo Branco, a gente faz um trabalho de psicologia esportiva muito forte, tá, pô, tá me ajudando bastante, tô evoluindo muito nisso. E, cara, o, o que eu vejo, a linha que eu, que, eu, que, eu, que, eu, que eu tô levando é eu sou privilegiado de ter UFC na minha cidade. Eu sou de Niterói, mas é aqui do lado, então é minha cidade, estou em casa. Tipo, eu fico pensando, tipo, o Davidson Figueiredo, que é lá do Belém, vai ser difícil o UFC ir para a cidade dele. O Glove, lá de Sobralha, vai ser difícil o UFC ir para lá. E para Manaus, para outras cidades, assim, vai ser difícil. E eu tenho o privilégio de estar lutando em casa, de ter meus pais, familiares, amigos, então eu vejo isso como um privilégio. Então... Já tá dando certo, sabe? Já, já tá positivo, já tá dando certo. Já vou estar tá em casa, tô, tô num card irado. Então, tô amarradão, tipo, tô feliz de estar tá lutando em casa. Tô feliz que eles vão estar tá lá torcendo pra mim, que eu tenho esse privilégio. Então, eu, eu vejo por esse lado, eu não vejo de um lado, caraca, vai estar tá todo mundo lá. Eu, não, pelo contrário, que maneiro que vai estar tá todo mundo lá. Mas não muda. Eu tenho que entrar lá focado para acabar com a luta. Não, não muda. Se eles estão lá, se eles não estão, já lutei no Apex, lá vazio, já lutei em Brasília, vazio, já lutei, a minha última luta foi em Jacksonville, lá no... Contra o Chimaev, estava lotado, não dava para ouvir nada, uma loucura. Dei meu máximo, então é isso. Chega lá sabadão, como eu falei, eu estou no presente, eu estou no focado, meu irmão, difícil de, 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 de qualquer um da categoria me ganhar. Valeu. Durinho, é... Cara, eu nunca te vi assim como o cara disse, realmente, você está reluzente, está iluminado. Queria que você descrevesse esse teu novo visual, com as joias, com o macaquinho e a cabeleira. É... Cara, foi natural o que aconteceu. Na verdade, meu, meus dois filhos, eles estão aqui, chegaram hoje, eles deixaram o cabelo crescer e eu achei que tá maneiro pra caraca o, o cabelo deles. E eu cheguei pro Josh e falei, pô, Josh, você não vai cortar o cabelo não, né? Seu cabelo tá irado. Aí ele falou, e você, vai cortar o seu? Aí eu falei, por que você não quer que eu corte não? Ele, se você cortar, eu vou cortar. Eu falei, pô, mas não quero que você corte não. Ele, então não corta o seu. Eu falei, então tá bom, então não vou cortar. E foi natural, foi ficando o cabelo. E essa roupa aqui é da Ruca, cara. Os caras me patrocinam e tinha um macacão lá. eu falei, pô, maneira esse macacão. Ele quer um, tem que ir para que ir para mídia, para conferência com ele. Eu falei, então me dá que eu vou, então. Então foram, foram coisas naturais aí. E estou me sentindo bem, cara. Estou em casa. Eu acho que tipo, tem que estar tá em paz, tem que estar tá feliz. Se eu estiver feliz, eu vou lutar bem. Então é isso, estou tô, tô feliz, estou em casa, a família está aqui, me sentindo bem. Estilinho novo aí, vamos ver se, <risos> vamos ver se eu mantenho. Eu acho que eu vou manter, estou gostando também. E é isso, tipo, feliz, me sentindo bem para lutar bem. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Valeu, galera.